Ladies and gentlemen, it is May 1st, 2021. It is May 1st, 2021, and this is the reason, today is the reason I voted for President Trump. When people say, well, how could you go from Bernie Sanders to Trump? May 1st, 2021. How could you go from, I, I know people, and I've explained to these people, I've said, look, this is the reason. And he just goes in one ear out the other because oftentimes apoplectic but always morally superior liberal Democrats do not care about this issue and is the, most, is the, is the greatest moral dilemma we face as a country. The greatest moral dilemma. There is no other issue that comes close to this. This affects the entire planet in a way that is even more detrimental than climate change. Far more detrimental for a number of reasons. But President Trump negotiated a deal to get us out of our longest-running military conflict, a counterinsurgency quagmire that Bush, Cheney, Rumsfeld, Clinton, Biden, Kerry, and Democrats got us into. On May 1st, 2021, today, we were supposed to leave, officially withdraw forever from Afghanistan. And this is why I voted for President Trump. And this is why I voted for Bernie Sanders in 2016. This is why I was the biggest Bernie Sanders booster on the internet, according to the Huffington Post, and the unofficial scribe of Sanders' most hardcore voters, according to the Washington Post. Trump saved us from four years of Clinton, who would have increased our presence in a number of countries that President Trump reduced or removed our presence from. And we have our beloved President Biden, who is keeping us in this country indefinitely now. He says September, but the organization that starts with the name T, I'm trying to abide by YouTube policies, is already making is already doing things to perhaps not abide by the negotiated deal. Obvious, the negotiated deal, the Democrats and others are going to say, well, they have to abide by certain rules or certain guidelines or certain protocols. Our adversaries in that country, they're not, everyone knows they're not going to abide by these protocols. Or at least they're not going to abide by all of them. And you have this article, I'll put this article below. Will U.S. troops pull out of Afghanistan on May 1st? Lawmakers hear testimony that the country is still rife with corruption, narcotics, and insecurity. Yeah, that's after 20 years. That's after 20 years of us being there. We have, ladies and gentlemen, thousands upon thousands of people, Americans, men and women who have been wounded, injured, we have thousands who have lost their lives. We have, we have hundreds of thousands who suffer from PTSD. We have hundreds of thousands who have suffered from traumatic brain injuries from both Iraq and Afghanistan. We've had families that have suffered here and in other countries. We've had unintended, conse unintended consequences from our regime change and interventionist foreign policy, not only in Libya, which President Obama presided over a catastrophe there. That was a, a failed intervention that turned that country into a failed state. But also in the countries, in, in, in countries in the region that were adversely affected, where millions upon millions of people had to either leave or, um, you know, escape the tragedy, sorrow, chaos, mayhem. You have people being bought and sold in Libya because of Trump, uh, pre not because of Trump, because of President Obama's foreign policy. But see, again, if it's not in your face, like one rebuttal I had from one person, very intelligent person, said, well, you know, uh, our, our soldiers aren't being... Uh, they're not being shot at, and it's like, oh my god, what are you talking about? How could you even come, how, do, how, how does an intelligent person come up with this? And then they're the same people who say, oh, I can't stand Trump, he's such a horrible man, a danger to the country, to the world. 
Hit subscribe to this channel right now. If you want to read my writing in The Hill, The Huffington Post, Salon, The Jerusalem Post, The Federalist, The Daily Caller, other publications, go to hagoodman.com. You can see my debates. If you want to support my voice to my new Patreons, thank you. So much. Thank you very much. My Patreon is below in the description. Oh, sorry, in the pinned comment. And also on hagoodman.com. But we were supposed to leave today. We were supposed to leave today. Am I the only person on the on the internet? Am I the only whatever channel pundit whatever that really cares? No, I know there are others that do. And guess what? They all gravitate towards almost all of them gravitate towards President Trump. And there's a reason that 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 the stat like if you want to talk about systemic issues, our foreign policy because of Democrats and Republicans has a systemic issue. It is causing, more, unfortunately, it's it's the systemic dilemma of causing more harm than good. This is far more important than any domestic policy because this affects the lives of people around the world, and it also, it, from the moral perspective, because morality is has been butchered by the Democratic Party and media. From a moral perspective, it is completely immoral to send Americans, to continue to send Americans off to the same conflict, the same war, the same quagmire, without any definition of victory. That is, General Daniel Bulger wrote a book called Why We Lost. We did not learn the lessons of Vietnam, and we did not learn the lessons of the past 20 years. We should, the, the United States military is made for quick, decisive victories, just like every military. Like, you can't have a, a 20 year, um, you can't stay in a country for 20 years and then read articles saying, well, you know, President Trump negotiated a deal on May 1st, 2021, but we have to stay there. Why? It's called mission creep. We can stay there, and then that could lead to not only a buildup of Americans again in the same country, but also in countries around the region. You can, you, you, it was President Trump that did a, a profoundly wonderful and amazing thing for this country. He, he removed our presence, or our, he altered U.S. foreign policy to the point where Biden is saying that he has to abide by, he's saying, well, we're going to leave in September. Why not May 1st, 2021? Because he wants very almost certainly a pretext to keep us there forever. This is not like Germany and Japan. I've heard another thing from very intelligent people, just like Germany and Japan. Germany and Japan um, in 1945 were not uh, counterinsurgency conflicts, and they wanted us there. And they were completely different, in completely different scenarios. But oh, by and large, that, that was a conventional, those were conventional military confrontations. Those were not counterinsurgency conflicts. Completely different ballgame. And you look at the, 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 the social and political and economic and geopolitical and military factors or aspects of Germany and Japan and um Iraq and Afghanistan are completely and utterly different in every way, shape, and form. They're not, it's not Germany and Japan. So, and then you add re religion into the mix and you add, you know, a whole bunch of other things. So, people literally did not sign up for this. And God bless the men and women who helped implement our foreign policy you know, created by people that never learned the lessons of history. You have the smart, the smartest people in the room, Ivy League, Harvard, Yale educated scholars got us into Vietnam. The smartest people in the room are oftentimes wrong. The smartest people in the room, the most intelligent people, the people with the highest IQs oftentimes lack wisdom, basic common sense. Wisdom is more important than intelligence. Wisdom to, to the, the ability to understand right and wrong 
or to decipher between right and wrong, good and evil, something that will benefit you and harm you or harm you or benefit others and or harm others. We should be out of this country. We should have already been out of this country. And it was President Trump who deserves um, a great deal of praise for what he did. And instead, all you get is his taxes and Trump Russia and all this nonsense. Democrats run on smoke and mirrors. Republicans, tr- tr- traditional Republicans do as well. They run on public relations and media. And we owed American men and women, the soldiers that we sent, and the veterans of this country, we owed them a lot more. And we owe them a lot more than to keep our presence in that region forever. And I think that's what's going to happen, unfortunately. And I hope that President Biden abides by his promise. Something tells me I don't think he will. I think the longer we stay there, the more of a pretext that, you know, they'll find an excuse they'll find to stay forever. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe right now. This is May 1st, 2021. President Trump should be praised for for what he negotiated, uh, an end to America's longest running war. And instead of that, instead of that, we're going to be there forever because of President Biden and Democrats. Almost certainly, or I should say, it's looking that way. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe right now. Thank you.